Totoru Gojo, child prodigy, the honored one, the strongest modern day jujutsu sorcerer, and the loneliest man in the world. On December 7th, 1989, an anomaly was brought into the world of Jujutsu sorcery, a being so strong that within a few years of the child's birth, a 100 million yen bounty was placed on the boy's head. However, when those foolish enough would attempt to eliminate this young boy, <laughs> the balance of the world changed when Satoru Gojo was born. Cursed spirits were growing stronger ever since that cold December morning in 1989. It was the same as when figure skaters started adding more revolutions to their jumps due to one athlete or when an insurmountable track and field record was shattered by a unique individual. The world was evolving, and with it, the shadows lurking in the dark would evolve as well. Sixteen years passed since the birth of Satoru Gojo. During this time, the big three clans of the Jujutsu world vied for power and had vicious disputes. But the anomaly known as Satoru Gojo was raised in the very center of this hostile environment, stealing the best years of his life and shaping his morals for the years to come. Satoru grew up to be a reckless, goofy young man, one who lacked care for the traditional rules of the Jujutsu world. At 16 years old, it was a hassle for him to protect the weak. He believed in survival of the fittest, with his untouchable strength steering his beliefs. However, he had a rival, one who couldn't care less about Satoru's utter strength since he was quite strong himself. And this rival held views in opposition to Satoru Gojo's beliefs. <laughs> いかいサトル。his name is Suguru Geto, a rival, a friend, but more importantly, a brother not bound by blood. He looked at Satoru Gojo and saw another human being, not an almighty source of power to be feared. However, on an August morning in 2006, the two brothers would accept a mission that would transform the trajectory of their relationship and their lives. On this August morning, Satoru and Suguru's teacher, Masamichi Yaga, presented them with a mission. But not just any mission, one where they must escort a chosen human back to their school as a sacrifice for the greater good of the world. This human would have their body taken over by a sorcerer named Tengen, an ancient sorcerer who possesses immortality and whose profound power has protected the world for ages. However, if he doesn't take over the body of a new vessel every 500 years, Tengen will be corrupted by his power and become a threat to humanity, or, as Gojo put it, But there was a big problem. The location of the chosen human had been leaked, and two major groups were after the young girl's life. Thus, their mission. Gojo and Geto had set out on their mission, 
but they were quickly confronted by one of the two groups. Though Gojo wasn't very concerned. However, in the distance, a deal was in the making. The second of the two groups, the star religious group, was speaking with the legendary sorcerer killer, Toji Fushiguro, to assassinate the vessel of Tengen. After careful thought, the sorcerer killer came to a conclusion. <laughs> After defeating their opponents, Satoru and Suguru awoke the vessel of Tengen, a spunky girl by the name of Anamai Riko. She didn't trust them at first, but her guardian convinced her otherwise. The two Jujutsu sorcerers were ordered to fulfill all of Riko's wishes over the course of the next two days, which included attending school. While Gojo believed it would be better to bring her to Tengen now, Ghetto understood the reasoning behind the order. Riko only had two days left to live. After that, she wouldn't be able to see any of her family or precious ones ever again, all for the good of the world. However, two days is a long time. Unknown to the young sorcerers, a public bounty had recently been placed on the girl's head. Though secretly, this bounty was part of a bigger scheme. <laughs> Toji Fushiguro planned to use the bounty hunters as a means to wear down the first sorcerer in 400 years to possess both the six eyes and limitless techniques. Satoru Gojo. The bounty was in effect and the two sorcerers had gotten wind of it. So Satoru Gojo rushed to Riko. <laughs> After battling a set of curse users, Satoru and Suguru took a flight to a coastal city far away from any enemy sorcerers. The plan was to return to their school the next day, however. After seeing the joy on Riko's face that day, Gojo decided they should spend another day at the beach. Geto was concerned, worried that his friend hadn't released his exhausting technique or slept in 48 hours and wouldn't rest the upcoming night either. But Satoru Gojo wasn't worried. At three o'clock in the afternoon, on day three of their mission, the group arrived at Jujutsu High. After being awake for nearly 72 hours, Satoru Gojo had finally turned off his limitless technique. But suddenly... <laughs> the sorcerer killer had successfully dulled Satoru Gojo's senses, but had missed his vitals. In order to deal with this foe alone, Satoru ordered the rest of the group to reach Tengen. Thus their battle began. But Toji Fushiguro came prepared, while Satoru Gojo was exhausted, resulting in...
Elsewhere, in Tengen's lair, Ghetto would give Rico a choice of whether or not to assimilate with Tengen. Moved to tears, the young girl decided she wanted to live out the rest of her days, so Suguru extended an olive branch. Zuguru and Toji battled in Tengen's lair, but ultimately the sorcerer killer wiped the floor with Ghetto. He delivered the body of Riko to the Star Religious Group and received his pay. But little did he know there would be a surprise waiting for him outside. When Satoru Gojo was on the brink of death, he gave up on defending himself and poured all of his focus into mastering something known as the reversed curse technique. Cursed energy comes from negative emotions, and in this world, it is what sorcerers and cursed spirits use to fight one another. Cursed energy is negative energy, but a reversed curse technique multiplies this negative energy and turns it into positive energy, resulting in a whole new realm of possibilities, such as healing. Thus, this epiphany allowed Satoru Gojo to essentially enhance his body, avoid death, and reach his full potential as a Jujutsu sorcerer. Satoru Gojo had awakened as the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer of the modern age. Before Toji Fushiguro passed away, he had left Satoru Gojo with his final words. He had a child, and that child would be sold to the Zenin clan in three years. Whether or not he would do anything with that information was up to Satoru. That child would grow up to be Megumi Fushiguro. Later that evening, Suguru Geto made his way to the Star Religious Group headquarters in hopes of retrieving Riko's body. But to his utter shock, he found something he had believed was lost forever. His best friend, his brother, Satoru Gojo, was standing before his very eyes, but he seemed unrecognizable. In that moment, Suguru Geto realized that the one whom he considered his equal had reached heights of Jujutsu sorcery he could never hope to touch. In that moment, the friend who had brought Suguru Geto out of his introverted shell had left him behind. But it was his friend's next question that would bring him to question his own moral beliefs. Suguru, what are you between Toji Fushiguro's final words and the death of Riko, a young girl gone too soon, a new era for Satoru Gojo would begin, one where he would look after the next generation to ensure the joy of their youth wouldn't be stolen from them, unlike his own.
One year later, Satoru Gojo had officially sealed his place as the strongest, and the team of Gojo, Geto, and Shoko had been disbanded. With an abundance of new and improved techniques that no sorcerer could hope to match, Gojo began taking on a plethora of missions by himself. Shoko focused on perfecting her healing techniques, and thus, Geto was also forced to take on missions by himself. Hara torikomu. Sono kurikaishi. Hara torikomu. The monotony of exercising curses for useless non-sorcerers began taking a toll on Ghetto, making him question the point of helping non-sorcerers at all. When one night, he came to a conclusion, he would make a world of only Jujutsu sorcerers. And thus, in his hometown, when two little girls were jailed for using powers that the normal townsfolk couldn't understand, Suguru Ghetto massacred all 112 villagers, including his parents. When Gojo got wind of the massacre, he couldn't believe his ears. He had finally begun to understand Ghetto's moral ideology of protecting the weak, yet his brother shattered his own morals. That fateful day, Shoko found Ghetto and immediately contacted Gojo. In the middle of Shinjuku, Gojo confronted his brother, commanding him to explain himself. But Geto told him that everything Shoko said is true, and that's all there is to it. But Gojo couldn't accept that. But Geto couldn't allow his parents to be a special exception. Besides, they were no longer his true family. But there was a point to it, significance too, even a great cause. But Geto thought Satoru was arrogant. Geto believed Gojo could do it, but the fact that his old friend would try to convince him that it's impossible to do when it would be possible for him was arrogance at its finest. Thus, Suguru Geto left his brother with a final set of words. Satoru Gojo stared at his friend in disbelief and prepared to kill him, but he couldn't manage to take the life of his best friend, the only one who saw Gojo as just another human that he could fight and argue with. The only one who didn't place him on a godly pedestal. The only one who could keep him true company. But now, Satoru Gojo was truly alone. Later that day, Satoru Gojo came to a conclusion while speaking with his teacher. He was strong. He was the strongest, even at 17 years old. However, he couldn't even save his own friend. It wasn't enough for him to be strong as the only ones he could save were those who were already ready to be saved by another. Thus his mission was clear to him now. He would raise the next generation of Jujutsu sorcerers to be strong, strong enough to keep up with him. And so, in August 2009, Satoru Gojo made a visit to Megumi Fushiguro, son of Toji Fushiguro, the sorcerer killer. And that brings us to the end of part one of the life of Satoru Gojo. Like this video and comment if you would like a part two, and remember to subscribe. Till next time.